So with that, we are going to get started with our July town hall meeting. Can everybody hear me? Oh, Jesus, it's August. Can everybody hear me okay before I go any further in the back? Okay. So it's August. See, I'm not even awake yet. I'm thinking it's July. It, my, my daughter's birthday is next week. My son's got to go back to college. It's the dog days of summer. I don't know. I can't keep it straight anymore. So I apologize. But it's August. It's August 11th. And I know that because I wrote that on there. So we are good to go. We are going to start our meeting. You can now all see well, hopefully, because we turned the lights off in the back. So we are going to get the party started because we have quite a bit of information, as always, with our administrator, Luann Del Petro, who's here to tell us and share with us all sorts of good stuff about Village Point. So here's Luann. Unless you want my slides. Here, you want them? We make it work. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, it figures the one time I have a lot of things here and we don't have the screen working. Um, so it's nice to be with you as always. Uh, we'll start off, as usual, with our census over at Village Point. Uh, July we held strong with our average census being 103, which is really good because usually in the summer we anticipate a dip in census because people tend to shy away from elective surgeries. Um, so our rehab census sometimes goes down, but I'm happy to say that we did stay strong through this um, month of July. Um, our long-term our long-term care neighborhoods, Evergreen at 28 census, Sandalwood 28 and Willow 29. So as you can see, we're um, holding our census well and staying strong. As far as our COVID update, as you know, I don't think we're ever gonna see the end of uh, COVID. They will pop here and there in occasional case. Um, so presently over at Village Point, we have one em employee that has tested positive, no symptoms, and we have one resident who currently is positive. Same thing, no symptoms. Um, so they're doing well, but we do maintain our precautions. Um, the staff are all in masks. We do routine testing, and we will continue to do so, and hopefully at some point maybe get out of our outbreak status. But everyone is doing well so far. I'm happy to share for um, anyone who has been here for the last five years, uh, we celebrated a five-year anniversary over at Village Point. Um, Village Point first opened its doors on July 31st of 2018, and we celebrated um, on August 1st. It took two days to get everybody from the old healthcare unit over to Village Point. So on August 1st, we did have a celebration over um, across the street. We had a little reception in our multi-purpose room. Um, Morrison Dining put on a beautiful spread for us. Uh, the food was fabulous. And it was just like an open house, just stop in. Um, we had slides um, going on the screen that reflected everything over the past five years, a little snapshot of it. So it was really enjoyed and uh, by you all, we had the staff come in and we had some visitors from the home office who joined us as well. So you may recognize a few people in this slide. So this was from five years ago, the initial ribbon cutting ceremony. And this was the spread that Morrison put on for us uh, for our party. So it was really appreciated and we had a really nice time. You may recognize the violin player. That is Jessica Manella. She's the speech therapist for both Village Point and Monroe Village. Uh, she volunteered her talents and alongside of her is her brother who plays the cello. So we had background music playing uh, throughout the event. It was a real special touch. What's new over at Village Point also is our landscaping, or we call it hardscaping, if you get to take a look at it. Um, we changed out all the shrubbery that was in the front of the building, updated it, made it a little nicer, 
and more colorful. We also added a water feature that is to the right of the front door, which is lit up at night, at night, which is really pretty. And it does have a very soothing sound as you're walking past it. So it really sets the tone as you come into the community. So we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on that. And that's all I have for you today. Enjoy the summer. It's wonderful being with you and have a great day. All right, that's why you always print things out in addition to having them ready electronically. Okay, so we're up to our next presenter, uh, Nathan Perez, our Regional Director of Sales for all of us here in Central New Jersey, but most importantly, he's ours. He doesn't like it when I, no, you don't mind when I say that. Other, other people mind when I say that, but um, he's doing a phenomenal job in his new role, truthfully, and, and it's great that we give people the opportunity to grow in our organization. And it's also great that while Nathan has more things for which he is responsible, we still get to see him regularly. So with that, with the sales and marketing update, here's Nathan Perez. No screen, so you gotta look there. Let's look at my slides. No, no, okay, I think I'm gonna Hi, how are y'all? Good to see you. All right, so we will start with our uh, roll up or wrap up for a year to date. I like to do the year to date numbers because I like the big numbers. <laughs> um, so in terms of our sales goal for this point in the year, actually for the end of this month, I should point yeah. that out. Um, we have a goal of 40. Uh, so far we have 35 sales on deck. So uh, I just met with the team briefly this morning. They probably have about another four to five apartments on hold. Um, and those are folks that are transitioning into the sales process with us about to deposit. So I uh, would not be surprised if we continue to meet our sales goal by the end of every single month. <clears throat> um, and that of course leads to move-ins, right? Um, usually after a sale, two to three months later, we have someone moving into our community and joining the family. So we have 32 closings. Uh, closings for us is a physical, uh, I'm sorry, an on paper closing, right? Sometimes people will move in months later. Uh, but 32 is our goal for closings and we have 25 on deck so far. <clears throat> a very, very, very big pipeline if folks are about to move into the community. This month we have, I think, six or seven more move-ins um, and then I want to say another five to six for the end of the year even. So you'll see a lot of new folks joining us. Inquiries and re-inquiries remain above target for the year. I want to say one is like 200 above, the other one's 100 above. So we are seeing, especially at this property, a lot of interest. I think that goes to the price point and the value proposition. Um, a lot of our other communities, as a reminder, are much more expensive and they do provide relatively the same product. Um, <laughs> And then also, you know, referrals are up. You guys are really helping us support the referral stream. You're bringing your friends and family to us. So thank you so much. That is our future resident pool, really. Um, and then all of the assistance and help that you guys give. I know that our sales team relies heavily on all of you to dine with folks, to meet with newcomers, to uh, explain to them, you know, the inner workings of the community. And I think that works really well here. So let's continue that. <clears throat> For August, we have a downsizing event. That is gonna be our event for this month. Uh, so far, we have 27 RSVPs, 11 of which are new. Um, that was an interesting test for us. As you all know, we have our sister property, Meadow Lakes, in the local market as well. Um, what I did with that was uh, one direct mail piece to advertise the same event at both communities. Um, so I am trying to lean on some economies of scale to try to give us uh, the leads that we need without spending too much more money and competing against our sister community. So uh, that is a tactic that seems to be working. Uh, and then uh, we'll take a little bit of a break for events in September, give our sales team a reprieve uh, and everybody else that supports us a reprieve. And then we're gonna have a professional panel event in October. That's gonna be another test for us. It'll be a Saturday morning event and it'll be a group of professionals uh, that help seniors. Uh, those would be real estate agents, downsizers, um, an elder care attorney, I believe we're lining up for that panel. Um, and we're gonna try to do it on a Saturday morning, see if we can't get some adult children in the area. There's a lot of folks that are both in the demographic here that would move into the community, but there's also a lot of folks that are in the demographic of your children that live in the area that might refer their parents to come to us. So that is why we're testing this professional panel on a Saturday morning. 
Um, and then in November, we're going to do two resident panel events. Uh, those, there's a few of you in the room here that participated in our last resident panel. It was incredibly, incredibly successful. So that is something that I will want to do at least twice a year. And here's our second date. Um, and so we're going to lean on the concept of Friendsgiving um, and have a, a resident panel on two dates in November. As a reminder how else you guys can help, uh, we have a really, really exceptional welcoming committee that is taking shape, I can tell already. Um, and so please take part in either joining the welcoming committee or just welcoming people in general. That's really the best way that you can help us support the sales process. Remember, everyone's part of our welcoming process and welcoming committee, staff, residents, everyone. Refer your friends. You can receive a credit if one of your friends or family members that you have referred to us moves into the community. A lot of you in this room have already taken part in that, so thank you. Um, if you have someone that moves in that is referred from you as a source, then you will receive one month free from us. And you can follow us on our Facebook page as well as provide testimonials um, and uh, commentary, if you will, on the Facebook page and our Google reviews. Please remember that it is a very technologically advanced world we're living in now. A lot of our leads do come to us from the internet or web sources. Uh, so we really do just have to always have a robust Facebook page with a lot of folks liking it, sharing those stories, adding stories to it, as well as reviews out there. Um, and that is not something that I can fabricate or create, right? Um, that is something that has to be driven from the resident and staff population. So please continue to support us in that endeavor as well. It's really important. Um, we're also always looking for great testimonials. Probably in the next few months, we should revamp some of our testimonials and get some new ones for the new year um, with some of the great folks that have been moving into our community. So we'll be doing that as a project. If you have any testimonials or um, want to talk a little bit more about how you can help us online and you're not really that tech savvy, that's okay. That's why you have us to lean on. You can come to our uh, sales office, give Eugene or Paula a call and they, help walk, they will help walk you through um, either creating an account on Google so you can provide a review or if you already have existing accounts, show you how to utilize them and help support us. Get that slide. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, the fun part, <laughs> uh, welcome to the family. These are folks that have moved to us since June or through June. Um, and so some of your names might be on here. And this is just a tradition we like to do to remind folks that it's not just about sales. It's all about the people moving in. So uh, Dolores Loppy, Barry Myers, Elaine DePiri, Evelyn and Henry Cox, Elizabeth Sokolow, Winnie or Winifred Boland, Roberta Braverman, Carol, why is Carol Bowman? Oh, yeah, Carol Bowman, Gloria DiMatteo, Joan Fields, and Jack Heckelman have all closed and joined the Monroe Village family. So, welcome to the community and welcome to the family. And thank you all for your support. It's great to be here. Have a good day. Thanks, Nathan. All right, I'm going to put him on the spot for a second. He ran out of the room. But um, so, so um, we at Monroe Village are on the cusp of 30 plus move ins at this point for the year. Yes. I hear it. Here. So, um, some of the other Spring Point communities. Yeah. Anybody close? No. Okay. Not at all. Nobody's close. We've got a lot going on. We have people who are interested in being here who want to join the Monroe Village family because we got lots of great stuff and we got lots of great folks who live here. Mm -hmm. And as we always say, all of you are the ones who, despite the great efforts of Paula and Karen and Nathan, you know, and Eugene, you're all our best salespeople. Mm -hmm. and we cannot thank you enough for what you do. And the fact that we're seeing this interest and this activity and the number of move-ins um, is really remarkable and a credit to all of you and to what we we experience here as a family each and every day um you know we we do think we're really really good at what we do we're never perfect but uh, i think that the the relative comparison to number of move-ins elsewhere versus what we're seeing here really speaks volumes about all of you and what you do to create this great great community so thank you so very much and that's always my segue into what do we do to create a great community and have lots of fun we have people like Steve Ween, who went one slide too far. 
Hold on, I don't know how to go backwards. Oh, there we go. Come back. Now, now we can introduce Steve Ween. Thank you. Hopefully everyone knows me. <laughs> uh, but thank you for the introduction. And just like Nathan said, it's not just about the sales. I like to take the opportunity to thank the whole marketing department. Um, like this is our first meeting since uh, June, right? We're August. Um, we had a nice uh, June Thursday, Thursday. It, it might have looked different, but um, I think the menu was very nice that we had. Uh, that was the day that we were in the hallway and I've been here for like 13 years. We used to do happy hour downstairs with the fish tank. Oh. So imagine, you know, eight tables, right? Yeah. It didn't happen. <laughs> so we, um, things changed, right? And obviously we are back and it's just something that was fun, different. We do try things. So uh, thank you to the audience as well as the rest of the community for giving us that chance. Uh, but again, thank you to the marketing department for um, they pretty much supplied that bar for us. So uh, that was very nice. And they also supplied the tent. OK, we weren't as lucky. I could say that. But um, again, thanks to the marketing department for working with us at all the things that we do and they able to uh, you know get the tent. Now we did have some tent activity. Um, we had a nice assisted living picnic, which I'm very proud about. And there was, obviously we used it for uh, our prospect events. Um, and we're still gonna probably look into it next year, right, Nathan? Um, <laughs> maybe a different type timeline, you know. I'm superstitious, so we gotta fix the timeline. Um, but again, I just wanna take the opportunity and I, again, thank you for the uh, community for um, you know working with us, because this year we had to deal with fires and smoke and you know the heat wave so it was definitely a challenge but we still had our events um in here and i think we all had a nice time so thank you okay so yeah look at my shoulder a lot um upcoming so tomorrow august 12th uh she is returning and uh with three band members um, kind of like dance, uh, jazz, um, and she'll do vocal, Demetra Joyce Bailey. Uh, next week, Jerry, he'll be back. He plays uh, electric guitar and he sings. So we're <laughs> happy to have Jerry back. Uh, Thursday, August 24th, we have a special Thirsty Thursday with music. And I just want to let you know, we do have a lot of new people um, and it's, it's good for people who've been here too. Usually I tip you off, right? When we have music, it's bold on the calendar. That's when we have a special drink. <laughs> so if you like when we have a special drink, that's the day. Um, and uh, we already have margaritas cooling in the fridge as we speak <laughs> for that day. Okay. Um, upcoming more, August 26th, uh, Mark Sherman. Uh, I believe he was here before, he plays the piano, vocal, um, same time, 7.15 in the auditorium. Uh, Barbara, she is new. Uh, I had to verify um, her act. I believe it's definitely uh, vocal, but I believe she plays um, guitar. I have to double check um, since this is her first time. Uh, I also want to thank, um, obviously, thank you to our volunteers. Uh, you know who you are. And we pretty much got everyone um, to say yes. We're doing a nice little thing, luncheon for our volunteers. So uh, thank you. If you are new, we have some new people. Let me know, give me a call. Uh, maybe not next week, but give me a call. Um, and we'll figure out how we can get you to volunteer. Uh, a lot of volunteerism also goes uh, with association. So, um, you know, association is a big part of volunteering here. Uh, staff update. Um, sadly, Hope is moving to Colorado. I think we did know that, but just wanted to uh, say well, we will miss her. Um, yes. Uh, we are actively seeking a replacement. Um, I actually saw one um, today, so I'm actively looking and um, hopefully we can do something soon. 
Okay, now this is very important, and I'm not in the chaplaincy, right? But um, we are great communicators, I believe, here. So wanted to share what we have planned for September, some high holy days coming up. Uh, Saturday, September 16th, Rosh Hashanah. We will be having a service, 11 a.m. in the auditorium, and I will be here too. Mm -hmm. Sunday, September 24th, we have Cold Nidri at seven o'clock service in the auditorium, okay? Monday, September 25th, Yom Kippur, 11 a.m. service in the auditorium, followed uh, at 12.15, uh, a Yitzhar in the auditorium. All services will be led by Rabbi Asher. So I wanna thank um, definitely our Rabbi Asher and Jenny for working with me and um, we wanted to make it happen. Some things are on the weekend, but we're gonna be here, okay? Um, and uh, we're looking forward to having a nice time. I'm trying to think of this. Oh, okay. Here's my, here's my kids. Sometimes I share what they look like. They're getting bigger. Campbell's eight, Eva's five, and Carter's four, and they're going all to school in September after Labor Day, but we're actually going on a family vacation, so that's why I said don't call me next week. I'm not here, I'm not gonna answer. Uh, but you can please reach out to Gina. <laughs> I have to remind her every day that I'm not here next week. But um, uh, thank you for letting me, and I appreciate with everything. We still have things going on next week, like. There's a weekly that's already being printed right now as we speak and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you and I'll be back um, the week of the 20th, okay? Um, I think that is it. I think so. Thanks, Steve. All right, so it's, it's readily apparent that Steve has three very cute and adorable children. They are going on a road trip next next week is that right you are you are driving to your destination which is not close can i say where you're going all right they're, they're, they're taking a road trip to tennessee now i want to know how many hours into that road trip these kids are still going to look like this i'm giving them about 40 minutes what do you think now, they're, they're good kids, but thinking back to all of us having had those days when our kids, if we had kids were that age, and we all did a road trip somewhere with our kids, right? And are we there yet? And what games can we play? And, and all of that. So we will be thinking of you, Steve, while you're driving. And I'm sure there'll several of us, while we be thinking of you, will say we're glad we're not you right now. So, now have a great time. You guys are really gonna enjoy yourselves. You got a great trip planned. So, uh, who will be pinch hitting if Steve's not here? Gina. Gina DePiro, our Director of Resident Services. She's got a lot going on as well. She's got some good information that I think everyone should really pay attention to. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Ms. Gina. The only reason why he's going to live long enough to go on a vacation is when he told me it was a road trip. I went, <laughs> okay, bye. Have fun. <laughs> I don't miss that at all. Okay, so some important business is um, over the last couple of months, we have come into different problems where we needed to give out information and we gave out information to the wrong person because they were no longer the POA and that information should not have been shared with them. It's not life-threatening, but it's very awkward and we need to always have the correct information. So if you change anything, if you change your living will, if you change your POA, you change who should be getting your bills, if you change insurances, and most important, if you change a DNR, if you change your medications, if you have a change in diagnoses, we need to know those things so that we can service you in the best possible manner. We can't 
help you if we don't have the correct information. We have sent people out and then the hospitals are upset. It's all the wrong information, but the medications, well, that's what we had. Um, and while that's a medical issue, sometimes as far as the POAs and all the contact, that affects my department and I really need you to please, you could drop it off under my door, you can give it to the clinic, doesn't make a difference, but we just need the updated information. Um, for your safety, please notify the concierge, another incident that has uh, occurred this summer. If you're going to be away for more than 24 hours, please let somebody know. Please call the concierge. We have an away book that we keep and monitor. Um, my favorite. If a, if a family member, you're not feeling well, and you're with family, or you call your family, and they decide to take you to the hospital, and you're staying, we need to know that you're not in the building. And most importantly, if we know that you're out of the building and you returned with your family, we need to know that you're back in the building. God forbid there's a fire and we're sending firemen to different apartments to help get us get people out. We don't know that you're in here. That could end terribly. It's really, really important. Yes, this is independent living. You hear me say that all the time. Sorry, that's independent living. Sorry, that's independent living. But this is a safety issue and safety is paramount here at Monroe Village. So we need to have that information. And all you do have to do is just tell the concierge. Anchor is back. <clears throat> so I heard probably 45 times oh is that what that is i threw it away yeah. please if you see that in your mailbox do not throw it away if you unless you don't want to do it um if you intend to participate in the anchor program please 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 don't throw it away um the senior center and the library are going to be ha um hosting um I don't know if a seminar, I, I, they didn't give us the information, but they will have somebody to sit and do it with you. Your family can do it with you. Your accountant can do it with you because it has to do with your taxes. Um, fill it out, send it back, but please don't throw it away if you're interested. <coughs> and the welcoming committee. Uh, Nathan talked about it. It really is being such a big help. Um, Ken Peabody is the uh, the, chair per the chairperson and um, the new residents, I've gotten such positive feedback. They all say that the uh, residents from the welcoming committee have been so helpful and informative and made them feel like they were indeed part of the community, which is what we want. Everybody wants to feel that they're not isolated, especially when they're new to a community. Um, if you want to join the committee, please contact Ken Peabody. Um, but there are also, if you don't wanna make that like formal commitment, we can uh, also do other things. Like if you're only interested in helping a new person that's on your floor um, and checking in, that's fine too. Not such a big commitment. Um, any little bit helps. So uh, please talk to Peabody's if you are interested. And I thank you very, very much. Huh. Okay, so recently, um, what was it, Wednesday, every month we have um, a, re a resident association meeting in assisted living. And this month we had uh, guests from the executive committee, uh, Barbara, uh, Barry Falk and Julie Gelb. They attended uh, the council meeting to talk to the residents and they received a tour and they learned about um, things that they didn't know was going on. Like we have now a culinary program um, and special activities uh, that go on and bus trips that happen in assisted living. So uh, they were very, I wanna thank them for coming. Uh, the residents were very, very happy to see them and to brag about uh, what goes on in assisted living and uh, Barry and Julie tried to bum lunch. 
<laughs> when they saw that we were having something called deli day uh, in a uh, in a like a buffet bar style, they wanted a bum lunch, but no, no, they couldn't. Didn't want to stay. Yeah, exactly. And that's all I've got. Thank you all. I hope you had a nice summer. But uh, don't think that that's the end of the fun because fall starts a whole new ball of games. That's right. So have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. Oh, there's one thing I oh, forgot. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry. Um, Steve talked about Hope and that's why he ran because he, oh. he doesn't want to hear this. Yeah, um, Hope true. wrote a beautiful note um, to everyone in Monroe Village. And she said, thank you to everyone here at Monroe Village. I've gotten to know some of you more than others, but you have all influenced my life in very different ways. I feel, a great, I feel so grateful to have had such a wonderful work, working team and bosses around me during my time here and particularly thankful for having such lovely people come in and out of the fitness center each and every day. The wisdoms you have imparted on me have not gone unnoticed. All the anecdotes of your spouses and children and grandchildren and pets and life experiences have made an impression in my mind that will last a lifetime. I feel lucky to have had the opportunity not only to work with you all, but befriend some of you. Many of you have become people I can look up to and feel so blessed and grateful for everything we've done together. I hope, I can only hope that I've had a similar impact on all of you. Thank you once again to all of my coworkers and bosses and to each and every resident for everything you have given to me during my time here at Monroe Village. Now. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Isn't that what being a family and being a community is all about? You know, the, the impact we can have on one another, the, the, the good times we can have, and, and you never know who carries what away from an interaction that someone may have with you. And um, I, I, that just captured it all. I don't, I don't have anything else to say. It really just captured it all. And, uh, speaks so highly, I think, of who we are as a community and who we are as a family and how we, we care for and support one another and how somebody who's leaving to pursue her dream, um, which is really, I'm, I'm not you know, going too far over the top when I call it that, she has an opportunity to go join a dance program in Colorado. It wasn't an easy decision for her, as you can see in what she wrote. So. Um, Thank you for creating that opportunity for hope. I, I think that's really, really special. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over for our uh, annual new director hazing part of the program. Um, I'd like to introduce Sharif Washington. Sharif, we all know, is our new director of housekeeping services. Uh, Sharif's been with us now about eight weeks and is continuing to get acclimated, but he wanted to stop by, say hello, and uh, introduce you to somebody. So with that, please welcome Sharif. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, still getting acclimated. It's, going, it's been a lot, but um, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. And, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for being patient with me. Um, and also that I finally have hired, um, brought on a supervisor who is going to be supervising over here at Monroe Village. And I just want to take this time out to introduce you to the new supervisor, um, Mr. Anthony Jones. Anthony. Come on down, Anthony. We'll give another round of applause. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anthony Jones. Um, this is 
pleasure to be given the opportunity to work here in Monroe Village. I've heard a lot of good things about not only the residents, but the staff as well. Um, to just give you a little feeling about myself, I have experience. I've been a director at other facilities for about 14, 15 years. Wow. Um, so I just took this opportunity, Dell reached out to me. Um, she said she needed a supervisor. And I felt like I was a good fit here after a meeting with the staff and HR. I came a few times before actually accepting the position, but here I am. Um, this is my second, this is my first week. Look, I'm, I'm already off track, but this is my second <laughs> week here. Um, and I look forward to you know being here for a long time. And if you guys have any questions or concerns, um, I'm a working supervisor, so I won't hesitate to come clean your room if necessary. Whatever you need, you can call me or pull me to the side and let me know if you have any issues. Okay? Well, welcome to the family, Anthony. We're really happy to have you here. Um, yes, we are doing a little rejuggling in, in the way that we are um, handling the, the supervision or the management side of our housekeeping team. Um, we've always had a lead housekeeper or housekeeping supervisor position, but it's always been a little more um, behind the scenes, if you will. So we're gonna rearrange the program a little bit to, to enable our residents to have more interaction with the leadership folks from our housekeeping team. So Anthony will be the, the hands-on day-to-day, in and out, all over the place, um, for the Monroe Village side under Sharif's direction and Sharif as we know oversees both Village Point and Monroe Village. So having somebody here who will be dedicated just to this part of our community is really, really great to be able to do. So uh, let's give Anthony a little bit of breathing room. He's got a little bit of a learning curve, but like he said, he comes from a, a great background. He knows a lot of stuff and he is eager to get engaged. And I think he's gonna be with us for a very, very long time. So again, Anthony, welcome. All right, we're gonna move from housekeeping to maintenance. Uh, anybody been to the DEF courtyard lately? All right, that's all I'm gonna say. And with that, I'm gonna introduce the director of facilities, Stan Mazakevich. Hi guys. Good morning, everyone. Just wanted to give you a little update on the concrete and asphalt walk work that we're doing over there. The asphalt walkway in the D, E, and F courtyard is being replaced with wider, safer concrete paths. Yeah, it's a big job. The asphalt walkways around parking lot number three and parking lot number four are also being replaced with concrete. Once this is com complete, we'll then begin striping all the parking lots. The maintenance team has also been working on the trash room. Uh, we've been enhancing them. All the trash rooms now have motion sensor lighting and free swinging entry doors. Okay? All right, everyone. Take care. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Stan. So yeah, a lot of concrete work going on. We've had a little bit of a delay in the last, what, few days with some of the weather, but you know, that's the way it works. We've got to do what we've got to do in the timing that we can. I think they did another pour yesterday, it looked like. I don't know, are they doing a pour we today? Do a pour today and a pour tomorrow. Okay, so another pour today and one more tomorrow. So for those of you in that area, please be cautious, please be careful. If you have a courtyard view, feel free to watch the guys as they pour the concrete, um, but, uh, for those of you who are out there who are our walkers and whatnot, please stay away from that area. It's pretty pretty clear that there's construction going on, but nonetheless, please steer clear of it as the, the guys are doing their work and ripping up that old asphalt and replacing it with concrete. Um, it's a big job, like Stan said, and we wanna make sure everybody stays safe while that work is being done. Um, and as far as the trash rooms, yes, that's the next phase of where we're at. We know that some of them were easily accessible, some of them were not as easily accessible. So we took care of that in all of the trash rooms. And I want to offer my thanks to some of our residents who let us know that there were some inconsistencies in the various doors and lighting. So I think we're on par with where we need to be there to make it as easy and as safe as possible for everyone. 
So with that, we're gonna move on to Matt Smith, our Director of Dining Services. Matt and his team have been quite busy. Uh, they're gonna share with you a little bit about what they've been up to and what they've been seeing and what they've got planned. So with that, please welcome Matt Smith. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Friday. All right, so we were just gonna go over, review some of the uh, special events that we did for the last two months. Uh, we had the Father's Day brunch, and then we celebrated the uh, Caribbean American History Night, and then the longest day, and then we pro then we did Pride Day, and, and then we had Camp Day, which was a wonderful event that was held in here. Uh, then we did Fourth of July, and then the day after 4th of July, we celebrated Country Western Day. And then we wrapped up July with a ice cream social that was held here too, which was a fun time. I had a lot of res residents approach me and say, hey Matt, I see that we have kitchen tours. How, how, how does that work? Where do I sign up? Um, and signups are held at the concierge desk at the front. Uh, just see Diane. They're held every uh, first and third Tuesday of the month at nine o'clock. Uh, whoever signs up meets in front of the restaurant and they're held, uh, Chef Marlin gives the tour. It kind of gives everybody an idea of how our kitchen is ran from when the server comes, greets you, places the order, how the kitchen receives the order, how it's placed, and then how it comes out to you guys when, you, when you're sitting down and the, and the servers come to you. Um, it's been a great, uh, successful uh, tour so far. We've had about 20 residents that have taken part in this in the last couple months that we opened it. Um, is there any other questions? Please, it's on 1979, um, or just stop by, give me a call, shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to ask those, answer those questions that you have too. Now, we have, now we're going to talk about the dining survey, okay? I know I appreciate everybody that would partake or took in that um, they're tabulating the re results right now uh, I should be getting them in the next week or so hopefully fingers crossed and once they are then we're gonna host a little event probably in here or somewhere where we're gonna review the uh, results with everybody and then we're gonna also roll out what our action plan is with all the feedback that you guys received as well okay and then there's the other question I know we did a, we did the survey and, and the raffle. We have the raffle winners. So the grand prize winner is Miss Dupari. She's gonna spend the day with Chef Marlin. Uh, then we have a wonderful uh, Monroe Village cutting board with the Monroe Village logo on it. Okay. Uh, Ms. Terazia, who says that? Terazzi, sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> you won. And then the Peabody's won the uh, mixing bowl. And then the, and the Esther and Hor Horvath received the platter of sweets. There you go. <laughs> and then the Gelds and the Penners won the short charcuterie board. And then we're gonna all be in contact with you in the next couple days to set up a time when we can deliver those to the residents that, that won. All right, no, this, I know this has been a hot topic for the past couple days that I've heard, probably the past couple weeks. Um, making a reservation for the restaurant, okay? Reservations can be made up to two days in advance. The reservation hotline, which is 6433, is available from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's when you can call. I have someone coming in around 9.30 that'll start listening to the messages, take recording them, and then finding out how we can accommodate. Um, don't get uh, upset if you're put on the wait list. The wait list is only so we can see if there is room, we have enough servers, and for the most part we do. And then the office hours are from 10.30 to 2.30. That's where you can stop by, confirm your reservation, place a to-go order, or make a cancellation. Now we have some data, 
okay? Uh, I just wanted to share this with everybody. We took the whole entire month of July, all right? So the first column, it shows you how many reservations were to taken for the week. So that's 770 reservations or residents that were able to get a reservation. There was only 27 for that week that weren't unable to get a seat. So that's 97%. You can see that we averaged pretty much about 97% except for the last week of July 31st. That's because there was a lot of last minute cancellations. That meaning last minute cancellations, you had some, some a resident made a reservation for a table of six and when it was time to get seated, there was only three, there was only four. And the person that made that reservation said, oh, so-and-so didn't make contact you guys, let you know? No, so that's the reason why that number is down. So if there is anyone that needs to make a cancellation, I'm asking that you guys do that hopefully if you know before 2.30 so that we can reshift the dining room to seating. So if there's a six that need that turned into a four, we can move it to a four and then we can accommodate a six top. And that's the reason why the number on the last week is a little bit lower. So that's why I'm gonna to go to the next slide. It's gonna show you kind of in a bar graph way. You see the blue, the big blue line, that's how many Seats that, seats that we were able to accommodate. And that little tiny red or orange line is how many we couldn't. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty good. We would love to be 100%, but sometimes, you know, I'll take a 97 and 96 every week. So just in, in re, re, reiterating what I just said, the importance of calling or canceling a reservation if you cannot be there okay the earlier that we can you guys can let me let us know the better we are to accommodate a resident that's on the wait list if you're unable to make the reservation please make sure that your cancellation is done before 2 30. and then i'm just going to wrap up with our contact information okay so in the bistro, if you need to make a reservation, anything greater than five, or to call for it to go, it's 6432. If you're calling for a reservation in the restaurant or to go or a cancellation, it's 6433. If you need to know what the next day's menu is, it's 6485. And then my number is 6424 if you have any questions or concerns or comments that you want to get in contact me with, or you can just shoot me an email. And that's all that I have. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Also, I'm going to put on a new screen on Touchtown after the town hall, just to say, if you're going to make a cancellation, make sure you make it prior to 2 30 so we can make any more accommodations for any other the other residents all right you guys have a great day have a wonderful weekend thank you thanks matt yeah it's really kind of crazy when you look at it we, we averaged if i go back to this couple of slides 786 mouths fed every week in the restaurant um, that's the average, that's that last line down there. That's a lot of meals that we serve each and every week. That's just what's sit down in the restaurant. It doesn't matter, that doesn't count meals to go, it doesn't count deliveries, and it doesn't count any of the service that we're doing upstairs in the bistro. So again, the, to look at it and see that, that while we would like to be 100%, 96% of all those who want a seat in the restaurant are getting one. You know, like, like we said at the Dining Services Committee, man, I want to thank the committee members for their engagement and involvement and discussion about this topic. You know, that's a solid A. Um, and and uh, I say that as the son of a teacher and uh, the chair of the committee is a former teacher. So uh, we thought 96 was, was a solid A. Um, and I think that's great. But the importance that we ask of all of you and Matt, you know, really pressed upon it is, if you do make a reservation and you need to change it or you need to cancel it, 
please, please, please let us know. Because then what the dining services team is able to do is reshuffle the deck and then they can accommodate additional residents. So, so please help your fellow residents out. If you make a change to your reservation, let us know as promptly as possible so that we can adjust accordingly to accommodate as many people as we can. And the other thing I want to note, you know, if you look at the average able to be unseated in a week, it's 34 people a week. And most of those, when we look even further into the data, they're large tables. And that's the difficulty that we, we've talked about here time and again. We only can accommodate so many large groups. If you break your group up, if we can't accommodate a large group, we're happy to figure out a way to do two sets of four or two sets of three, and those folks can get seated. But there's only so many large tables we can accommodate. So please, you know, I ask everybody again to, to be a little flexible, both with, um, if you have a large group and we can't accommodate you, as well as with if you'd like to eat at five, but we can seat you at 515, as an example. You know, a little flexibility will help all of us get that 96%, you know, up to a 99 or 100%. So with that, uh, we're coming down to home stretch. Got just a few things I wanna share with everyone today. I thank you all for your patience. It's been another uh, heavy information meeting, but I think it's good information that I hope you all have appreciated hearing and having shared with you. So a reminder from the library. If you borrow a library book, because this is like, like uh, self-service, right? And Scout's Honor, okay? If you borrow a book, please sign it out. The, the sign outs are down there right in the library. And if you sign a book out, please return it when you're done. Don't leave it in your apartment. Don't leave it on a table in a hallway someplace or in one of the lounges, wherever to, to you know, be left never to be seen again. Please, please, please do your part. If you do borrow a book from the library, they're there. We have a beautiful library. Please use it, but please be responsible and sign your book out and return it when you're done. Little update about the business office. Um, wanted to let everybody know that Maria is no longer here with us as the facilitator. We know Maria was recently planning to get married and had a lot going on in her life and uh, She's kind of at a crossroads and uh, she's off to some other adventures and uh, we will miss her and we wish her well. Uh, but we are looking and searching and have been for a replacement. And as some of you may have noticed, um, various members of both the Monroe Village team as well as folks at the home office have been covering all of the responsibilities of the business office facilitator. It was a little bit rocky that first week or so, but I think we've fallen into a pretty good cadence and rhythm. As far as all of you um, and your interactions with the business office, do what you've always done if you need to contact the business office. Call the phone number, leave a message, somebody will call you back. You receive your, your bill for the month, pay your bill, please. Put it in the mail slot up here where the mail room is. It will get processed. We have a system in place where we're doing everything we need until we have a new facilitator there. So it should be minimal in terms of the impact to any of you. If you just follow the normal routine of calling the business office, yes, you will be leaving a message, but we'll get back to you. CC is real good about picking up those messages and delegating them out. We try to get back to folks within 24 hours, okay? Second thing, uh, and I know we've talked about this, but just as a reminder, we know we talked about Sharif and Anthony coming and joining our team. As we know, Dale Hill is retiring. Dale has been our housekeeping director here for over, well, at various roles for over 30 years. Pretty, pretty incredible. She's been kind enough to help us out and stick around a little bit longer than we originally planned to help with the transition of Sharif and now with Anthony. Uh, but her time with us is drawing to a conclusion. So what I'd like to do is invite all of you to come join us at the Thirsty Thursday on August 24th, which Steve mentioned is the special Thirsty Thursday of the month because we'll have music and margaritas. Um, so 
please join us. We're going to do it that Thirsty Thursdays. We're going to celebrate Dale. We're going to honor Dale. We're going to turn it into a little retirement party as well as Thirsty Thursday. And it'll give everyone an opportunity to say thank you to Dale, to wish her well, for her to um, interact with all of you, and just thank you for, for your kindness and your support over the years. So uh, we encourage you to, to make an appearance at Thirsty Thursday on August 24th as we celebrate Dale. So with that, we are going to turn it over to the comments and questions portion of the meeting. Uh, we turn the lights on. We're going to get a couple of microphones. And uh, if you do have a comment or a question, please raise your hand and wait for the mic to come to you. We will get one to you. Um, and we will go from there. Where are we going to start today? Let's see. Millie. We'll start with Millie in the front. Hi, Millie. Hi. I was just questioning. A little closer to your mouth. There you this go. This is in reference to the dining. It seems that almost every day they are out of standard uh, mm -hmm. things on the menu. Right. One day it's cranberry juice, one day it's another thing. Yeah. But uh, that was never... That right. So, happens. so Millie, what I what I encourage everyone to do is, if you're told you're out of something, please ask to speak with a manager. Talk with Matt. Talk with Tyra. Talk with Marlon. Talk with Holly if she happens to be there. Um, she's normally in assisted living or up in the bistro. All of the managers. There's a manager present at every meal. A lot of times, what we find, Millie, is unfortunately, if a server tells you that we don't have something. They, they might be mistaken. They may just have forgotten or they might not quite know where to look for it. Um, sometimes we are, I don't wanna say it's never, but a lot of times what we find is that unfortunately the servers need to continue to be educated on some things. And if you just ask a manager, we're likely to be able to rectify that for you. Okay, thank you. We'll go here and we'll work our way to the back. Hello there. I'm new and I'm Joan Fields yes. and I must say that everyone here is extremely pleasant, goes out of their way to say hello and mostly I'm really very happy. That's correct. However, the dinner thing is uh, really awful and I think if, if you had 4% of the people coming in for sales and you told them they wouldn't be able to get to dinner, they'd have to take a brown bag to their room, mm -hmm. I think that 4% would drop out immediately. And this is our home. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a restaurant we're going to, it's our home. So if our mother said you can't come to the table, we'd think she was pretty out of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think whether you need an expert to yep. expedite it further or what, I don't know. But other than that, I'm, I'm very happy, but I'm not happy about that. And I, last night I brown bagged in my room. Mm -hmm. and, and again, our goal is 100% and I hear what you're saying. Um, but do remember, there are several other options available. It's not just a brown bag. We do have a second dining venue, and we do try to squeeze people. And we need to keep working on it, no doubt. But I also think it's important to see the progress that's been made. Okay. We don't see the progress. Hi, Betty. Hi. I don't think her mic's on. My question concerns housekeeping services. Uh, in the past, we had our met here, and we kind of knew uh, what our met did and what they all did. Could you please explain and make a little, uh, clarify at least, sure. uh, the differences between the services we can expect from Anthony and from Sharif? For example, many of us have been waiting weeks, if not months, for the annual cleaning. Uh, who was in charge of that? Okay, so and Betty, we have a special problem. And uh, by the way, I must say I finally thank you guys to getting those door that our uh, garbage door open yep. because it was impossible. Thank you. Of course. So, so nothing changes, Betty. The the the, the responsibility of the housekeeping department is the same. Sharif is the director of housekeeping, and Anthony will be the supervisor. Anthony will be primarily focused on the Monroe Village side, and Sharif will be primarily focused on both Monroe Village and Village Point. If you have a housekeeping question or concern, you call just like you always did, and someone will be in touch with you to be able to take care of that for you. Nothing changes, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. 
Where are we going with the mic? Hi, Bob. Good morning. A um, couple of things that come up this morning that left me with questions about long-term picture. The first one has to do with our overall um, uh, uh, room, rooms available and population plans. Now, yep. <clears throat> one thing that reminded me was that I didn't realize that Village Point was only five years old now. I thought it was a, a year or two older, but now I realize that. Um, so my question actually, could you give us a picture? When did Spring Point take over? And when did we start to change our, our, our mix of rooms? When we, we, I heard we had 330 rooms when Spring Point took over, and now we're planning to have 200. So that's kind of the, all right, so things, some things aren't here. Yeah, quite yeah. Clear. I'm, I'm glad you yeah. brought this up because yeah. we always want to dispel rumors or things that don't seem accurate. First and foremost, Spring Point has owned Monroe Village since it opened in 1988. Then why was it called Presbyterian Homes? Because that was the former name of the organization. We rebranded in, the, in the late 2000, 2007, 2008 oh, to I move see. away from the, even though we are not a religiously affiliated organization, nor have been probably for the better part of 35 or 40 years, there were still some that had concerns about the Presbyterian name. So all that was was a rebranding. The organization dates back to 1917 and actually does have its roots in the Presbyterian Church, but has not been religiously affiliated, like I said, for about 40 years. So a decision was made based upon market research and study to go ahead and change the name. And that happened, like I said, about 2007, 2008. But no leadership, no ownership, no management changes have happened since 1988 when the building opened. Okay, that's good. So now now in terms of the, the change in, in, uh, in the, the mix of sizes of rooms. Sure. When did that start and, and, and where are we towards that goal? So, so I don't know if we ever had 300 plus apartments here. I could be wrong. We were in the 280s, I believe, at one point. When Monroe Village was first developed, um, the market was significantly different for senior housing. Um, folks were looking for small apartments. They were look, not looking for large, expansive places. As a result, when this community was built, the mix of apartments skewed very, very heavily towards smaller apartments. What has happened over time, and several of you know this because that is why you chose to move here, you were looking for larger apartments. And what we found is from a demographic standpoint, we were not really able to attract or provide for what those folks were looking for. So we made the decision that we were going to strategically, as things became available, look for ways to create larger apartments, like the Yardley that you live in, like the Wade Bridge that we're building now, like the Ventners that several other folks live in. And what we have found is that those apartments are very, very popular. If you look at the empty apartments, about, I wish Nathan was still in the room. He is still in the room. How, what percentage of them are our little small one bedrooms? Too many, yes. Probably about at least 75 to 80%. Yeah, so 75 to 80% of the available apartments are the small one bedroom apartments. So we continue to work through where we have opportunities to make adjustments. And what we have found is that that has worked very, very successfully. That project probably started, I've been here almost six years, so I'm gonna say probably about seven years ago, just before I, I started, uh, closer to 10, okay. Where we've strategically started, we really aggressively made some changes in the last five years to find opportunities for larger apartments. And what we continue to find is as soon as we make one available, it's sold, which leads to move-ins, which is what we all really want. Okay, then the, the other big picture one, um, I, I was told, and you can confirm or deny it, that um, back in the good old days, yeah. we had a maintenance staff of about 13 people. Uh, near as I can tell, we're down, and from what I've seen, we have three, and maybe we're losing one at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. So what is the picture for the long-term plan for our maintenance staffing and because of course it's the balance between doing things in-house and, and outsourcing. Correct. And there's a lot of downsides to outsourcing as we've all seen with the Morrison situation. So um, could, you, uh, could you elaborate on that? So sure, Bob. So if we had 13 maintenance people, which we may have had once upon a time, 
we probably uh, have a lot higher monthly service fees because we'd have to pay 13 people. So many years ago, the decision was made across the Spring Point organization because when we had that large of a maintenance team, they were doing all of the apartment renovations and turnovers and all of the capital projects themselves. We basically employed an entire construction company. And the decision was made that, that really wasn't feasible to continue to have our residents pay for that kind of service. So what the decision was, was to utilize specific contractors to do specific jobs. As a result, through attrition, certain maintenance positions were removed. That goes back, gosh, probably 10 plus years, and that occurred across all of the Spring Point communities when the decision was made to farm out um, apartment renovations. And as you can see, you know what we're doing now is a renovation, especially if we're doing a construction project for um, you know, combining apartments, it's very intricate and very involved and something that definitely needs a professional who is licensed and through all of those different trades. Um, and that's really where the decision came from in doing that. The complement of maintenance staff at Monroe Village remains consistent as it has been for several years. Uh, we have three maintenance team members, a fourth who works the evenings, we have a director, plus we have two over at Village Point. So that's a grand total of what, two at Village Point? Because remember, that 13 would have included the old healthcare center too. Right. So you've got two over there, you've got four here is six, plus a director is seven. Mm -hmm. And is that complement uh, filled now? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, my questions all come back to an ongoing frustration with delays in addressing maintenance problems mm -hmm. and even problems with communication and, and tracking these efforts and if I may say so there may be a weakness in um, monitoring the outside contractors mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of gaps in that okay well thank you for your input I appreciate that okay oh, yeah, um, um, moving down my list um, the, uh, the, in the dining services reservation um, in the presentation I had some confusion between re reservations versus people seated because uh, at one point we heard that it's possible to walk in without a reservation and be seated. So I'm wondering whether that was properly accounted for in the presentation. Well, I, I don't know how many right now are walking in without a reservation and being seated. That is possible on a space available basis. We were looking solely at reservations, not on any walk-ins. And really the majority of our walk-ins occur upstairs in the bistro. And the data we shared today was specific to the Fireside Restaurant. Okay. And finally, um, in, in the spring, you said that there was going to be repaving of some of the uh, parking lots. I heard today that it's only going to be pothole filling. I'm deeply concerned about safety issues in pot parking lot two, mm -hmm. where there is usually standing water, where there is uh, often green slime growing in the standing water, um, and where there's a lot of gravel in the parking lot, which causes problems for canes and walkers, um, besides my roller briefcase, but that's not so important. Um, so, since we are not, uh, is it true, first of all, that we are not actually repaving parking lot two this year? And if so, what can be done about those safety issues? Sure, Bob. So, so the plan was never wholesale repaving, and that was never stated that way. The plan was patch and repair areas that needed. That includes potholes. That includes low spots. As far as the the cinders that may be in the parking lot, when we go through the um, painting of all of the parking lines and spots, we will need to blow out all of the parking lots in preparation for that so that we're not painting over little stones that are eventually going to disappear. So each of those parking lots will be blown out and that should rectify that situation for you as well. Okay, the, but the, the one piece that's not rectified is the, the drainage problem in parking lot two, that, that there's a lot of standing water there. It's there all winter. Um, salting only partially addresses the problem, but it makes the long-term problem worse because the salt all breaks up the pavement. So um, that's a... Uh, um, I, I, I hear your concern, and like I said, yeah. through some of the pothole replacement and patching, we will look to address that issue as best as we can. John, hi, John. You talking to me? No. Well, there's nobody else here named John. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but you might be right. This is a hypothetical situation, yeah. Here, and it may never happen. But it's but John, please. No, no, that, yeah, and that wasn't either very, sit or stand, not in between, buddy. That wasn't very, and that wasn't very clever. <laughs> Go ahead, John. 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, Bob brought up the topic about the, uh, the the apartments that are getting a little bit larger. Just a hypothetical situation here. Supposing you have a current resident, and the current resident would like to enlarge the size of their apartment and have it enlarged. And we have available apartments here that the resident, of course, they would bear the cost of moving stuff from one place to the next temporarily to rent. Would that be doable? Sure, residents are always um, open to transferring if they so desire. All you need to do is reach out to Gina. We talk about what's available, what we might be able to do. As far as knocking down walls in, in your existing apartment, no, you know, I, mean, I don't know if your neighbor will feel too too comfortable no, I, with I, that. I, I, I was, I, okay, okay. I, 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 <laughs> but, I, I, but that's why, all kidding aside, that's why there's a lot of strategy that goes into what apartments do we combine and when. There's certain units that can go together. There's other ones that cannot. Obviously, they both need to be vacant. It, it's, 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 kind of like a Rubik's Cube that way, trying to turn the things and get them the right way. But as far as residents wishing or desiring to move to another apartment, that's always a possibility. Yeah, yeah. This would have to be a perfect situation yeah. where the, the apartment next door were also um, 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 vacated and um, there were other apartments that the resident could move into if they wanted to have their particular apartment uh, enlarged especially because of the location of where the apartment is, if they believe that their apartment is in a, a really nice location to start with, that they just would like it to be a little larger. Absolutely. Okay, once again, Jay, it's very hypothetical, but you'd have to have a perfect world where every piece fell into place. Yeah, to do exactly. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, where are we going next? We'll go to Barbara up front. I have a negative and a positive okay. about the same subject. Sure. Okay, we're talking maintenance. We have three wonderful maintenance men. <clears throat> One is called Gus, who has been out sick for quite a while now. And I hope Gus works goes... in housekeeping. Gus does not work in maintenance. Okay, I'm sorry, in maintenance. And all three of them are great. Um, Will, I think his name is. He William. also works in housekeeping, yes. yes. And John. Okay. Yes, they are yeah. three porters in the housekeeping department. Yes. Exactly. And I think they're wonderful, okay? Problem is, um, with Gus out, Two of the guys are overloaded, and I know that, and I'm sure people that are interested in them, which I am, will understand it's it's really a heavy load for them. Mm -hmm. um, on Wednesday, um, which is a bingo day, mm -hmm. and it's also a Scrabble day. Yeah. And unfortunately, there was only one person working. Right. And what happened was, Dale, who always steps up when she's needed, came here with Anthony and that's how I met him mm -hmm. and they set up beautifully for bingo yep I have 15 people excuse me <clears throat> 15 people coming to Scrabble on Wednesday and I walk into the room to set up at 25 to 7 for a 7 o'clock start and all I see is a jumble of chairs and tables and nothing set up that's my negative okay my positive is I went to the front desk I spoke to Mark. Yep. Mark happens to be a security guy. Yep. And I explained the situation and he said, no problem, Barbara. He had, he waited a few minutes until another security person came. He came to the room. He set up four tables and 16 chairs. Yep. And did that for me in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. And so even though he's not part of that group, I want to say thank you to him. Okay. Yep. And that's what we do. When right. when when one department needs a little extra help, other people pitch in. You know, unfortunately when folks are out sick or are on a leave of absence, we don't have a stockpile of additional folks to bring in. So everybody else needs to shoulder the burden as best we can. Right. Well I just want to say thank you to Mark. That was a really yes. nice gesture. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Where's where's Cece? Where are we gonna go next? Cece. Oh, 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 oh. We're gonna race? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we'll be back. It's hello. Oh, oh, <laughs> I want to tell you the barbecue ribs was the best meal I've had since I've come here, and I hope this will continue. Promise? That's the feedback we need to know what you like and what you don't like. But I'll tell you, for every person who likes the barbecue ribs, 
There's somebody else who said they don't eat barbecue ribs. So it's the balance between all of those things, but the feedback is very, very important. And that's why those comment cards are also very important, that you provide us with that information on what you like and what you don't like, so that we can continue to tweak the menu as we hear what is popular and what's not. Okay, thank you. Hi, Ms. Oklahoma. Hi. So I'm, I'm a pretty happy camper, and I've been here about five weeks, yeah. maybe at six. And um, I, I, I guess the thing I want to do is question language. I want to know what reservations up to two days yep. means. Yep. Because I mistakenly called three days before and I was told oh that doesn't count you have to call again and I said oh Correct. I called day long I thought today was Friday not Thursday I'm very sorry and I was very humble and I do make mistakes like that but I don't know what up to means so what up to means is if if today is Friday right today is Friday you can make a reservation up to two days before Friday for Friday night so Wednesday so Wednesday, you can make a reservation for Friday. Thursday, you could make a reservation for Friday. Friday, you, well, availability is different. I'm just saying that's the way that works. The reason that we instituted that, and that went through the Dining Services Committee once upon a time, was that when it was open reservations, weeks, a week in advance or more, people would call and book out for an entire week plus, which made it very, very difficult for some people to be able to get a reservation. So the decision was made in conjunction with the Dining Services Committee to say you could only make a reservation up to two days before you wanted to eat. That way it allowed for more equitable opportunity for everybody to get a reservation. Yeah. But you can't, in fact, make a reservation the day before. If there are still seats available, you can. But if it's already booked, then no, that would be unfortunate that you could not. But that does not mean that you absolutely have to. Okay. I, what I'm trying to get at is the experience of a resident who yeah. comes here new and hasn't had the, the whole no food available except in your room because of COVID and all the other things that people have been here longer. We mostly who've come here recently think the food is quite remarkable for any institution. And I've enjoyed almost every meal I've had, and I've only eaten at night in the beast in the, uh, the fireside lounge. Yeah. Though I have gone to the bistro otherwise. Yeah. So, what I'm trying to get at is truth and advertising. We came here thinking that beautiful, looked down upon white tablecloth dinner was available every night to everyone and so it's been a bit of a shock to every single new resident i've spoken to mm -hmm. and i've tried to speak to as many as possible yeah and so it's surprising as if we've been somehow sold a bill of goods that it's all available the numbers are impressive 96 you know if you get a grade of 96 in school that's wonderful but the 4% of people is spread over all of us. We've all been told, oh, you have to eat your room tonight. Right. And I'm not saying 96 is where we stop. I want to be clear I about that. I understand that, right. but the numbers aren't telling the actual experiential story mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. every single new yeah. person has experienced. We are told it's too two days ahead but maybe you can get in if you go at the time uh, you know the day of uh, we we just it, it's confusing okay so it's, so if if we said only two days would that be easier if we said only the day of would that be easier what do you think so i mean I'm, I'm, i don't know yeah I'm not, and that's what we've continued person, to work through but i i do feel as if it's very important for yeah me, for you to know what stories people are telling each other at the dinner table yeah and we know and not that. just the numbers right and 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 i understand that and again if you are part of those on average about what is it if on any given night if you are one of those 27 or six well it's not that many in a night in a week it was 34 so let's call it 35 we had five weeks worth of data so 
35 people seven days in a week is seven people a night. So if you're one of those seven, it stinks. I get it. And we want to continue to be able to accommodate those additional seven people on average. But the reminder to folks is we need, you know, be a little flexible too. If we want to eat at five, but we can seat you at 515, that doesn't mean we can't accommodate you. And I think that's like any restaurant too. And sometimes folks I think are confusing the inability to eat within a couple of minutes of where they make a reservation with saying that they can't get in. It's, it's, and part of that's language too. You're yeah, absolutely right. I, I don't, I don't think that has bothered people as much. I know I, as the person yeah. reserving, have always agreed to whatever they asked. I mean, I think that you're right, that that is a, a, an ordinary large eating venue situation. Yeah. But I do think that being told to eat in your room, people are coming here because it's friendly and because they've been isolated by COVID. Yeah. So they're, they're choosing sociability and the risk of infection. Yeah. And then when they're told they have to go back to isolation, the experience of that yeah. is hostile. Yeah. It feels... Well, what, what I'd like to do is actually talk with you individually. We can talk about if there's a reason why you can't get a seat, what the other options are, because it certainly is not yeah, well, isolation. I just, I just have told people to come to my house and I'll pick up their meals at yeah, the Yeah, there's, there's lots of different ways but it can nobody, be done. But nobody is saying anything like that. Mm -hmm. And the, the wait staff and the hostesses are very lovely. Yeah. Everybody here is attempting to be pleasant, I find. Yeah. And that's my great positive. I think it's lovely mm -hmm. to have people try to be pleasant. Okay. But I do think that there have to be other ways of using language to reject people. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. So I have a special guest. You! Oh, As you I hear, got to She wants to teach. Hi. And we're holding her up to her class. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a few more. Where did the microphones go? All right, here you go. Muriel, there you go. Okay, comment. Um, I spoke with the new housekeeping supervisor and I asked him what is the best way to reach housekeeping because I've very rarely been successful and he said the best thing to do as we've heard here before is to call the front desk and have him paged. That's the best way mm -hmm. to well, reach housekeeping rather than leaving a voicemail well, on the phone. Yes, but, but let me just offer a word of caution. Yes, the housekeeping department, including the director and the supervisor, do not sit and wait for the phone to ring. They are out on the floor, they are right. doing things. So yes, it's hard for that. But I also don't want folks to to think that they should, it's at their, you know, if there's something that's an emergency, we need to know about that right away. If there's something that's not an emergency, the last thing we wanna do is pull someone away from something they're doing to deal with a situation that isn't an emergency. So I asked, I guess, for a little thoughtfulness as to whether it's a, a front desk call or a leave a message and somebody will get back to your call. And only you will know what that, where that falls. Thank you. Somebody back here. I know. I know. Thank you. All right, well, Carol's got the mic while Steve's gone. Go ahead. Just back to the dining situation. Hold that a little closer to your mouth. There you go. Back to the dining situation. Sure. Why can't we have more service? I mean, that's really the right. solution to the problem. So, so I'd love to have more servers and we continue to try to hire them. That's the challenge. It's not a matter of not wanting to have more servers. It's a matter of how many people we can attract. Again, the employment situation, I think we've talked about it here before, is very, very challenging, particular in service industries like restaurants. Our experience, and I know we can say it's not a restaurant, it's our home, and I agree with you 110%, but from an employee standpoint, it's a restaurant. From a service standpoint, it's a restaurant. So the challenges that other restaurants are facing, other service industries are facing, hotels, restaurants, service venues, those sorts of things. We're not immune to that. If we could have 15 servers a night, well, we could, we could, 
but there's also a cost that goes with that. We're, we expect to be able to have 10 servers or so a night is basically where we like to be and that should be able to accommodate everyone. There are nights we cannot get enough, we cannot hire enough. But some of the servers say that they can't work, that they won't, they're not allowed to, even though they're willing to work. Well, well they again, work a certain amount of time. Age. Well, some of it's age. Some of it's age related and what child labor laws are too and what we're able Four to let people work in terms of time and how late and things like that. So there are some challenges that are unique to working with the, the, the student population, I'm gonna call it for lack of a better term, that we need to navigate through. Where are we going next? Betty. Betty. First, my comment. I had resolved when I came here today, not to mention the dining room. However, listening to everybody, my conclusion is, and I think we have to accept it, is that the reservation system it's an exercise in frustration, both for the residents and the staff. So, so for those of you, and, and just one other thing, yeah, is has anything been done about uh, uh, making the Prevna pneumonia vaccine available? Yes, Betty, as I told you before, when we're ready for all the vaccine stuff, we will share all of that and make sure that what is available, we can do for you. Yes. Where are we going Let next? Go. Bobby, you'll be next. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, how are you? Good. My question is this. When I used to have my own home, the air conditioner filter was changed frequently. I've been here two and a half years. One time the filter was changed. Okay. Is there going to be a filter change on the air conditioners? Sure. Mine is making an awful lot of noise. Okay. Have you reported the noise to anyone? No, I'm waiting okay. for it. <laughs> so I will make sure they're aware of the noise and we have somebody come take a look at that as well as your filter. But will the filter be changed? I will have somebody come and take a look at it. Absolutely, Dorothy. Where are we with Bobby's next? Hi, Jay. Hi. I know you're tired of hearing this, but I have to reiterate what other people have said, especially every single solitary word that Elizabeth said is ditto for me. This place, listen, like a lot of people, I didn't want to come here. I was put in a position where this is where I have to be, and this is where I have to spend the rest of my life. And I have found the residents to be outstanding. I, I said this at the other meeting the other day, I think there's a cloud in the sky someplace where you hire because there's no way that you can get a staff of all these people where every one of them is perfect and they are. There's not a bad word to say about a, a, a staff member in this place, but the dining situation ruins everything. When somebody said, well, I'm happy that there's only 5%, well, you're not part of that 5%. When you're a part of that 5%, you're not happy that there's only 5%. And I had to eat upstairs one day because we didn't get a reservation. You can, if you tell me to eat upstairs and you're going to serve me the exact same food, somebody's going to bring it up, I'll eat upstairs and not be unhappy. But I'll just give you one example. I ordered salmon croquettes upstairs one day and they came, they were yellow, there was nothing pink about them, there was, I couldn't eat them. I just left the whole thing, left the whole meal. A couple days later, I'm downstairs and they have salmon croquettes and I said, oh, should I take the chance, it's different. These beautiful pink roasted, toasted, delicious salmon croquettes. So don't tell me to eat upstairs when the food is not equitable, when I'm paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars monthly to live here where I paid hundreds of thousands to buy in to live here. And I can't eat in the dining room because we also were never told that there might be a possibility. That is the saddest point. That is what you have to fix more than any single thing. And you can see from what was said here. Yes, something was said about rooms and yes, about a filter. But what did most of the people say? And the majority of the people won't speak up. Well, thank you for doing such. I do appreciate it. We certainly have heard everyone's comments today and we'll continue to work to improve the situation. But it is a work in progress 
and uh, we continue the journey forward as quickly and as best as we can. So we hear you, we understand, and we will continue moving forward in ways that we can further enhance and improve the experience of the dining room. So with that, any other comments or questions? No. All right, well, if not, look, oh, Barb's got something. Oh, can we adjourn? Well, yeah. So with that, thank you all for being here. Thank you for your participation in today's meeting. We will play those pictures. So. Uh,